The notorious Conor McGregor is the most famous UFC fighter to ever enter the octagon. He was the first simultaneous double champ in company history. His pay-per-view numbers blow every other fighter out of the water. He was named the world's highest paid athlete by Forbes. So why is he competing Saturday night at UFC 264 in Las Vegas? Revenge. McGregor's rivalry with Dustin Poirier goes all the way back to September of 2014 when they first faced off. Back then, the Notorious was on a rocket ship towards superstardom and knocked out the diamond in round one just as predicted. But if you followed Poirier's career, it's all about one thing, persistence. His never quit attitude and stop at nothing drive to be the best and arguably the most ruthless division in the UFC has defined his career. And when he finally got his rematch with McGregor more than six years later, he was ready. Tonight is one of the best I've ever felt, honestly. I was emotionless, I was an assassin, and I was here to execute. I'll regroup and pick myself up, get up off the floor and go again, and that's it. Now McGregor and Poirier will settle the score in one of the most anticipated trilogies in combat sports history. Will the Notorious etch his name in the history books one more time? Or will the Diamond get the ultimate bragging rights in this epic trilogy? We're in for a potential all-time classic Saturday night at UFC 264. There you have it, UFC 264. Dustin Poirier, Conor McGregor meet for the third time. Rivalry tied at 1-1 with knockouts on each side. But beyond the main event, there are plenty of things to be excited about. Lots of action for fans, intense storylines. That includes Thompson and Burns. You have the women's bantamweights with Aldana at a 5-2 round, the heavy hitter in O'Malley, and it will all go down at T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. Obviously, McGregor and Poirier this time around. Things have turned south between both men. There's been some back and forth between the two name calling, picture posting. The drama is unfolding right before our eyes. In preparation of Saturday night, let's welcome in Luke Thomas, our insider, Brian Campbell. Now, before we start, I want to note that you guys are live from Las Vegas from the Bet MGM Sportsbook Bar and Park MGM. So starting off, I don't think it's a huge surprise that McGregor wants this rematch just six months after losing to Poirier. Do you guys look as at McGregor in this fight that he's putting his reputation on the line a bit? BC, we'll start with you. You know, I certainly think from an elite standpoint, there's a high risk reward factor in this fight that involves McGregor's elite reputation. I know people will say, oh, he's still a big name. He's still going to make money in the future and fight big fights, win or lose. But let's not forget, he's going to turn 34 within the next week. If he loses twice in a row to a true elite in Dustin Poirier, you package that with the title loss to Nurmagomedov just a few years ago, and suddenly you're looking at a McGregor who, when he steps up to the highest level at the best weight class for him right now, lightweight, he could not get the job done. He's not going to make 145 pounds where he was last the champion back in 2016. And although he can make big fights at welterweight, nobody takes him as a serious title threat. We know that the championship opportunity is at stake. Charles Oliveira, the new champion for the winner of this fight on Saturday. But for everything Conor McGregor's been through, all the inactivity, I don't think that it's out of bounds to say his reputation as a pound-for-pound -pound elite is on the line, a loss could be damaging in terms of just being a celebrity starfighter moving forward. The, the, this is no doubt in my mind that Conor McGregor's reputation is on the line here. Now, obviously, he has achieved enough where you can't take that away from him, right? The first guy to hold two titles and two separate weight classes simultaneously. That just doesn't get erased because he might suffer a loss on Saturday. Nevertheless, you have to understand the fight is sort of being presented as rivalry, and it is. These two guys, at least at this stage, don't like each other again, and they obviously want to get best two out of three. Okay, fine. I acknowledge that that plays a part. But also, and not just for Conor McGregor, Dustin Poirier, too, has kind of staked this battle as yes, you know, a big prize fight opportunity to take care of his family, but for guys who fought in 2014 and then went on very unique paths after that, where they kind of said that that chapter of their acrimony was over, they have really intertwined their fates here. Yes, to answer your question and all the things that BC said, Conor McGregor is no doubt staking the idea that he would not only win the rivalry, but can be any elite contender in this division again, which he has not been, I guess, in terms of the winning performances in quite some time. Conversely, it is also true that Dustin Poirier doesn't get chucked into the garbage bin of history if he loses, but if he comes up short a 
uh, I guess the second time in the third fight for Conor McGregor, it does reduce his status somewhat as a guy who was not only the better of the two, but maybe not quite as the elite as the other guy, the guy who couldn't get accumulated greatness while Conor was off doing his, you know, his nonsense outside of the cage. Luke, I want to follow up a little bit more on that. It seems like this is a lot more uh, than just a paycheck for Poirier in this one. So if you could just expand on that. Yeah, I mean, listen, there's two kinds of greatness in the world in which this fight you get, you actually get a little bit of both. Here's what I mean. Connor just was shot out of a rocket, and he's special. But BC knows this. Some guys and some ladies, they just explode onto the scene. They become immediate sensations, and that's what Connor was. But there's another kind of greatness, and that greatness we like to call here on Morning Combat accumulated greatness. You might stumble along the way. You're going to see some numbers in that losing side of the ledger, but you're going to see a lot more winning, and what you're going to see is people who build over time to something a lot more special. That's what has happened with Dustin Poirier. He has has been in the trenches. While Connor had some big wins, also some big losses and some time away, you see Dustin Poirier just steadily swinging the axe, swinging the axe, and it added up to something really impressive. That skill development he has put in there is big, but also he has tried to use these bigger fights as a launching pad for credibility, not just money, not just visibility. Beating Connor McGregor, whatever stage he's in at this point, two out of three times, in addition to all the other wins he's got, would put him, as BC has told us, in a space where you might have to question whether or not he's the legitimate, one of the all-time great lightweights. Without ever holding the full championship, and that's what's interesting about this fight. Poirier had the chance to fight either a Charles Oliveira or Michael Chandler for the vacant title given up by a retiring Habib Nurmagomedov. He chose a third fight with McGregor instead. Now, obviously, there's the fame and money that comes with that, but I think if you really look back over Poirier's history, which Luke just sort of identified, his last major giant life-changing loss was the first fight between the two of them in 2014 at featherweight when McGregor knocked him out. What Poirier needed to learn from that fight was how to be a truly elite professional, how to not fight emotional, how to change things. He moved up in weight. He's gone 11 and 2 since then. He's the first fighter to stop McGregor via strikes back in January. Now six months later, he not only has the chance to be the first fighter to gain two victories over McGregor, he has the chance to achieve some things that you could argue I don't want to say more important than the title, but a chance to cement himself in history as one of the top lightweights of all time. Maybe the best UFC fighter to never hold that full championship. He's accomplished basically everything he can do except for winning the full title as a former interim champion. And if he beats McGregor a second time on Saturday, Dana White, the UFC president, already said he will be next in line to face Charles Oliveira. So Poirier, although the storylines really follow McGregor for this one, had so much at stake. Real quick, I also just add on top, don't forget, Dustin Poirier has wins over multiple multiple UFC champions. So did Dustin Poirier hold two titles simultaneously? No, he didn't. But he might have two wins over the guy who did come Saturday night, and that's a big deal. Yeah, obviously all eyes will be on that fight. We're going to take a look at some of the other matches coming up. What about with Steven Thompson? Do you think Thompson can secure one more shot at that welterweight title? Luke, we'll start with you. I mean, he is 38 years old. This is something BC and I were debating this morning. You look at the case of Wonderboy Thompson, and everyone's kind of he was a bit forgotten, let's say, after the Tyron Woodley losses. And you can understand why. Well, one was a loss, one was a draw. But, you know, after 10 rounds, not getting the title, that was kind of like his moment to say, I'm either going to get this or I'm not. But it turns out that's not really true. We're seeing in other divisions. At age 41, 42, Glover Teixeira losing to John Jones back in 2014. And then years later, finding a way to get another title shot long after that point. It is extremely, extremely difficult to do that in the Ultimate Fighting Championship. And that is sort of where the precipice of where one Wonderboy finds himself. He's a specialist who's become well-rounded. He himself has also been in the trenches of a very deep 170-pound division, but he's got a tough customer, uh, Gilbert Burns. But I think it should be noted here, the fact that, that a guy like Wonderboy could suffer those kinds of losses and those kinds of setbacks and still years later find himself in a very similar, if not nearly identical position, assuming he wins on Saturday night, that is almost unheard of. A handful of fighters have ever done it. It's big doings for a guy, as you pointed out, 36 years of age. Yeah, sneaky good resume there, never having the title. So, BC, we're going to come to you now with the Nico Price, Michael Pereira. This one has potential for crazy fun, and it's just going to be an exciting one to watch. What should we expect? 
Uh, you should expect fireworks and crazy things that you don't normally see inside of a fight. But the real storyline here surrounds Pereira, Pededa, if you want to pronounce it per correctly, the native of Brazil. When he came out on the scene in UFC, it wasn't really so much about how good he is or what he could do to win fights. It was the show he tried to put on. He would dance on the way to the cage. He would attempt what I call video game strikes that not only tax out somebody uh, cardio-wise trying to pull them off, he would try things that people never even seen running up the cage doing a backflip. The problem is that doesn't always equal putting your best foot forward to try to win. Pereira had to really lose some hard fights and hard lessons in terms of stamina, professionalism, but he's come back on a two-fight win streak. He looks to be a dark horse, maybe even title contender down the line because he's such a great athlete and he's so wild from the standpoint of being able to finish fights with strikes you didn't see coming. So why does that matter entering in there against a fun brawler like Nico Price? I've described Price as that friend in your friend circle who hanging out with him as a bad influence makes you do things you didn't expect to do heading into that Saturday night. I have to believe Padeda's coming in there Saturday looking to get a big win and advance further in the title contention, but Price makes every fight he's a part of, win or lose, a wild affair. Expect fireworks and expect Padeda to have to be the wild man of old when Price is walking him down. I would say those are the best friends to hang out with. I mean, you might get into some trouble, but it's always a good time. All right, great article on CBSSports.com, really breaking down what we can expect on Saturday night. Luke, is there another storyline that we should look out for? Well, I got to tell you, the main card uh, is decent. Obviously, your co-main and your main event are, uh, you know, the crown jewels. I'd actually say the prelim card is filled with some interesting fights. I'm going to spotlight one that has got all the hipsters talking. Ryan Hall, a jiu-jitsu black belt, famous for some of the, uh, the guards he has patented, 50-50 guard and whatnot. He's been back after two years. Two years. This guy won the Ultimate Fighter, hasn't competed in two years, against Ilya Toporia. Now, I know a lot of folks may not know that name. 23-year-old guy, at 24 now, out of MMA Masters, one of the biggest camps out of South Florida. This kid is an absolute hammer. He has a black belt in jiu-jitsu, offense everywhere, athletic, strong. He can do it all. But a guy like Ryan Hall, he's very different. He's got all different kinds of leg locks, unique entries. You haven't seen a guy do jiu-jitsu like this in a very, very long time, especially at this level. But he's been off for two years, and he's 36 years old. So you've got youth for really contrasting styles, but the winner there is going to make a big statement in the featherweight division. Can't wait to see that one. Got the hipsters talking. We got to <laughs> keep an eye out for that one. Thank you so much, fellas. For more from these two, check out the Morning Combat podcast. Morning Combat will be live from the Bet MGM Sportsbook Bar and Park MGM this week in Las Vegas. Their latest pod goes in depth with the five biggest questions heading into UFC 264. If you love combat sports, subscribe so you don't miss an episode. Want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.